Hi. So uh, we have done. Uh, we are uh, finished with uh, finding the center of mass, which is equivalent to the location of the particle uh, in uh, in particle dynamics, uh, particle mechanics. So today we are going to. Uh, study the velocity we want to study the velocity of velocity and acceleration uh, and force uh, of a system of particles right? so what would happen if there is a system of particles then how do you define the velocity of the object uh, the system uh, how do you define the acceleration of the system what is the meaning of force in the system Okay, so let's say that in some universe there are these five objects just like before one, two, three, four, five. And these guys are one, two, three, four, five. And supposing that all of them have their individual velocities. So this is v1, v2, v3, v4, uh, v5. Right. So what we want to do is we want to convert this picture into just like before, we want to convert this picture into one particle having that one velocity. So we will say that since the x coordinate of center of mass is let me write it like this. Since the x coordinate of center of mass is mi xi divided by summation mi, y coordinate of center of mass summation mi yi divided by summation mi, this means that dx by dt, so we already know that differentiation of position is velocity just using that so this will be equal to summation of m i d x i by d t divided by summation of m i because we are not going to differentiate mass mass we are assuming is constant similarly t uh, y c u m by d t would be equal to summation of m i uh, dyi by dt divided by sorry, divided by summation of right so we define the x component of the velocity of center of mass as m1 v1 x plus m2 v2 x whole divided by M1, M2, this is just the weighted average that we have seen. And the y component of velocity of center of mass is equal to <coughs> M1, V1y, where V1y is the y component of uh, the individual velocity. I will, I will just draw in a moment. Plus M2, V2y, and so on. Divided by m1 plus m2. Right, so, what do I mean by components? So this is v1 x. Um, this is v2 x. Uh, this is v3 x. This is v4 x. This is v5 x. And uh, similarly, we have v1 y. We have V2Y, we have V4Y, 
So if you know the <coughs> velocity of the individual particles of the system, uh, then what you can say is that the velocity of center of mass is equal to d r c o m so this is so a collective system of particles uh, will or can be defined as one particle can be replaced by one particle the mass of that one particle the location of the mass of that one particle uh, will be called the center of mass and the velocity of this one particle will be called the velocity of the center of mass Please write this down or take the screenshot. There is no proof why weighted average is the center of mass. Uh, so, uh, so there is no principle in physics. From where I can actually derive uh, that x coordinate of center of mass will be m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3. नहीं मैं बता मैं अच्छा ठीक है I'll tell you a proof I'll tell you a proof there is I can I can work my way backwards to it I'll I'll show you I'll I'll try to I'll try to convince you that this is how we define it but before I do that before I do that I must first talk about the force before I talk about the force, I must talk about the uh, acceleration. <coughs> so just wait for five minutes. And uh, <coughs> I'll try to prove. So the... Acceleration of the x component of acceleration of the center of mass uh, should be equal to the derivative of the x component of velocity of center of mass and the y component of center of mass should be equal to the derivative of uh, the y component of the velocity of center. So, acceleration of center of mass, the x component of acceleration of center of mass, 
will be equal to m1 e v1 x by dt plus m2 e v2 x by dt uh, divided by m1 plus m2. So x component of acceleration of center of mass will be m1 a1 x plus m2 a2 x divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3. And, and similarly, the y component of acceleration of center of mass will be m1 into t v1 y by dt plus m2 t v2 y by dt whole divided by m1 plus m2 so a y c m is equal to m1 a1 y plus m2 a2 y divided by m1 Right, so acceleration of center of mass is equal to dv cm by dt is equal to a cm a x cm i cap plus a y cm j cap. Okay, and now I want to define the force. And once I've defined the force, then we can work our way backwards, uh, hopefully, uh, to prove uh, that Okay, so let's uh, go back to our hypothetical universe uh, where we have the And now what I do is I want to change the scope of my system. I want to change the definition of my system. Abhitak, I was taking the whole universe of the five particles as a system, but now I want to uh, now I want to take a smaller system uh, because I want to differentiate between uh, external and internal uh, components of the system. So what I will do is I will consider this as my system, okay? And then I will say that, look, the net force which is acting on the system must surely be the summation of forces acting on particle one plus summation of forces acting on particle two plus summation of forces acting on particle T, right? This, now this makes imminent sense because in uh, system ke andar ye teen particles hai, aur ye teen particles ke upar individually ho sakta hai uh, kuch uh, force uh, lag rahi ho. So agar main system ke upar force define karta hon, if I define the force on the whole system, uh, then surely, 
which simply must be the vector sum of all the forces acting on the individual components of the system. So now the question arises, what are the forces acting on particle one, two, and three? So I have told you uh, before that there are only four fundamental forces in this universe. Uh, gravitation, electromagnetic, uh, weak nuclear, and strong nuclear. Now, assuming that we are not talking about nuclear forces, only gravitation and electrostatic forces, then the forces acting on these objects, on these one, two, three objects must be due to gravitation or must be due to electrostatic or electromagnetic attraction, repulsion, whatever uh, on, these, uh, on these particles. So what I will say is that, look, let's forget about the electromagnetic forces as well for a moment. Let's talk only about gravitational forces. So particle one ke upar forces kaun laga sakta hai? Well, according to the first law, particle one ke upar jo forces lagengi, they will be due to the objects in the surrounding of particle one. And in the surrounding of particle one, we have particle two, three, four, and five. And supposing that they are applying a gravitational force, so I will say that look, the force applied on one by two, which is F12 is something like this. Force applied by three on one is something like this, F13. Force applied by four on one is equal to something like this. Force applied by particle five on one is something like this. Right? And I just want to add all the forces acting on all the particles which are within my system. So on particle one, the forces are F12, F13, F14, F15. And the forces on particle 2 must be F21 plus F23 plus F24 plus F25. These are the forces on particle 2 applied by 1, 3, 4, and 5. And finally, the forces on particle 3 must be F31 plus F32 plus F34 plus F35, right, okay. Now let's talk about the forces on particle two for a moment. So forces on particle two will be like this. This will be F21. On particle two, the force due to three will be like this. This will be F23. And this will be force F24. And finally, this will be force F25. And if I talk about the forces which are acting on the particle, this F32, this must be F31. And I'm not going to draw this here again. But the point is, but the point is that the third law of Newton tells me that the force applied by two on one should be exactly opposite and equal, should be exactly opposite and equal to the force applied by two on one, uh, by one on two. So this means that F12 must be equal to minus of F21. F13 must be equal to minus of F31. And F23 must be equal to minus of F23. And therefore, these forces, they will cancel each other out because F31 and F13 are same. Uh, equal and opposite, F12 and F21 are equal and opposite, 2, 3 and 3, 2 are equal and opposite. 
So these collective sets of forces are known as the internal forces because they are applied by objects which are internal to my choice of system. And these collective sets of forces are called external forces because they are external, because they are being applied by objects which are external to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the chosen system, right? I think this is very, very uh, simple to understand. अभी तक क्या हो रहा था कि हमारे सिस्टम में केवल एक ही पार्टिकल रहता था क्योंकि हमारे सिस्टम में एक ही पार्टिकल रहता था इसलिए थर्ड लॉ का एप्लीकेशन हमेशा उस सिस्टम और एक एक्सटर्नल पार्टिकल के बीच में होता था यू रिमेंबर वी वुड हैव हैड सम सॉर्ट ऑफ डिस्कशन when uh, somebody would have said ki are ye to forces equal and opposite to cancel ho gaye aur main mere ko bahut tez gussa aa jayega are ye kya bol raha hai kya bol raha so the reason was that as long as your system contains only one particle right there is no chance that the forces the action reaction pairs are going to cancel each other out because if one of the action reaction pair acts on your chosen system then the other pair then the other part of the pair is going to be acting on another object which will be definitely out of your system because we are only dealing with one particle system but the moment you start dealing with multi particle systems then if inside the system particle Two applies a force on particle one, and particle one applies a force on particle two. Then these two forces will cancel each other out, okay? Because the net force on the system must consist of the sum of forces acting on particles one and two, right? So the reason for your confusion, here a nahi hai to cancel out ho jayega, maybe. Stems from this. यहाँ पे ये होता है, यहाँ पे वो cancel out होते हैं, लेकिन single particle system में कभी भी action reaction pair cancel out नहीं हो सकता. Okay. So the summation of internal forces is always zero, since the summation of internal forces is always zero. This applies that the third law of newton is equal to summation of f external is equal to m into a c o m right now i just want to quickly derive this i can actually derive this and once i derive this uh, from here then you can uh, you know uh, do a backward derivation for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, center of mass Let's see how I derive this. I'll just change the slide for a moment, and then I'll come back to this slide. So I told you that the net force acting on the body is equal to summation of F one plus summation of F two plus summation of F three. Now, if I consider this net force, and I just for a moment, if I say, "Acha, tika, ye mera system is pe net force ke laga." so according to newton's second law this net force must produce an acceleration of the system so mass of the system into acceleration of the system is equal to now this guy will become m1 a1 and this guy will become m2 a2 and this guy will become m3 a3 therefore acceleration of the system which i will call acceleration of the center of mass will be equal to m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3 whole divided by the mass of the system which is equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3 right so from this then you can work your way backwards to define the uh, the uh, x coordinate of the center of mass okay okay
Why am I making a distinction between internal forces and external forces? The reason is, the reason is that once you have decided your boundary, okay, once you have decided your boundary, once you have defined your system, then you don't need to look inside. Okay? Then you don't need to look inside. So, a very uh, famous thought experiment uh, that what would happen if all the people in the on the planet got together and they simultaneously jumped okay, what would happen if all the people got together at one place and simultaneously jumped up right uh, so I hope you have seen this inside a car. You move backward and forward and the car also slightly moves backward and forward. So extrapolating from that, somebody thought if all the people get together and they jump, then the earth will go in the opposite direction. Of course, calculation will show. <laughs> of course, calculation will show that uh, nothing will happen. <coughs> Excuse me. However, uh, if I were to choose the earth as my system, okay, if I were to choose the earth as my system, then whatever is happening inside, so atmosphere ke upar maine apna boundary banaya, so whatever is happening inside now will be uh, will be inconsequential. Andar jo hai wo log it does not really matter. Once I have decided the boundary to be external to the atmosphere on the earth, then only external objects are capable of applying a force on the system. Right? So the sun will apply a force on the system. The moon will apply a force on the system. The planets will apply a force on the system. But whatever is happening inside the system really uh, will not matter. Same for a person sitting inside the car. If I take the car as my system and the person decides to jump up and down or move back and forth inside the car, it does not matter. Only the external objects matter. That is why when we were discussing friction, I said that if you take the boundary as that of the car, then it is the road, which is the external object, capable of applying a force on the system, which is the car. Therefore, whatever acceleration of the car we observe must be due to uh, the road only. So if the car is going in a circle, a horizontal circle, then it must be the friction which is providing the centripetal force. If the car is going in a circle with a uh, with an acceleration, with a, with a, with a tangential acceleration, uh, then one component of friction is providing the centripetal acceleration. One component of friction is providing the tangential acceleration. If the car accelerates on a straight horizontal road, it is the friction which is responsible for the acceleration. And if a car deaccelerates, again, it is the friction which is responsible for the acceleration. So please remember that although this looks like uh, this looks like the second law, it is really a combination of the second and the third laws of Newton. Now. <clears throat> What would happen if F12 and F21 don't cancel out? Okay, then there will be problems. And I will discuss some of those problems with you. Uh, one particle system, as the name is suggesting, there is only one particle. 
राइट सो इट इज गोइंग टू इंटरक्ट जो भी इंटरेक्शन होएगा वन पार्टिकल सिस्टम का वो एक एक्सटर्नल ऑब्जेक्ट के साथ होएगा और उसके बाहर जो भी चीजें हैं जो भी चीजें रखी हुई हैं वो उसके ऊपर फोर्स लगाने के केपेबल है मल्टी पार्टिकल सिस्टम में एक पार्टिकल के ऊपर इंटरनल दूसरा पार्टिकल भी फोर्स लगा सकता है बट थर्ड लॉ के वजह से ये जो इंटरनल फोर्सेस लग रहे हैं दे विल एड अप टू जीरो दे विल एड अप टू जीरो Sometimes they may not add up to zero, but that is a very very special case which we will see later. A bit. Okay. So there are a few interesting cases which happen here. What would happen if the external force on an object is zero? On a system, is it? Right now, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Uh, please answer very, very carefully. Okay, so your answer will be a one-word answer, so everybody can uh, type. If F external is zero, this implies that M into A C O M is zero. Okay. Uh, M into A C O M is zero, and a question to push that to my brother, and this would imply that acceleration of center of mass is equal to zero. But then this would imply that M one A one plus M two A two plus so on divided by M one plus M two plus so on is equal. To does this mean now this is the question does this mean that a1 and a2 and a3 are all zero does this mean very good tolika very good sanjay yes yeah, good shot good very nice not necessary yes so i'll just rub this out so this means this implies that individual particles within system may have their own acceleration right but is you have okay Now, if A C U M is equal to zero, this means that D V C U M by D T must be equal to zero. This means that V C U M must be this. <coughs> this means that V C U M must be constant. Okay. Ah. And if V C M is constant, then this means that M one V one plus M two V two and so on divided by M one plus M two must be constant. Must be, must be constant. Does this mean? Okay, question number two. Does this mean that V one, V two, V three are individually constant? <clears throat> Does this mean that V one, V two, V three are individually constant? No, it does not. so v1 v2 may be changing okay may be changing individually but 
what will remain constant but what will remain constant m1 b1 plus m2 b2 is equal to constant anybody recognize what this is momentum ah yeah law of so we have arrived at a very uh, very uh, important juncture this is the law of conservation of momentum okay this is the law of conservation of momentum when is this law applicable where is this law applicable if you have a one particle system this law is never applicable okay agar aapke system mein hamesha ek hi particle rehta hai to ye law ka na koi use hai na koi matlab hai na applicability but if you have multi particle system that means that you have chosen to draw a boundary such that within your boundary there exist multiple particles if this is the case then for that particular system if the external forces are zero okay i am not saying anything about internal forces there can be there can be any internal force i don't care but if the external forces are zero that means that beyond the boundary of your system either there are no particles or if there are they don't apply any force if that is the case then the velocity of center of mass of that system will always remain constant it can never change and since it cannot change therefore the individual m1 b1 M two uh, the addition of individual m one b one plus m two v two plus m three v three plus m four v four and so on this cannot change and we define the product of mass and velocity as momentum of the particle and we say that p one plus p two plus p three is equal to constant this is called the law of conservation of momentum okay so please remember. where it is coming from before you apply it you cannot apply it on single particle systems meaningless multi particle system ka matlab ye hua ki aapko pehle to pata hona chahiye ki aapke system mein kya kya hai right so before applying the law of conservation of momentum you must be absolutely aware that your system consists of which particles and then you must be convinced that whatever system you have chosen the external force on that system uh, is zero okay so if external force on a system is zero uh, then the momentum of the part momentum of the system does not change right so let me just write this in a in a better way so we define momentum is equal to mv <clears throat> and then we say that if f external is equal to zero this means that the summation of momentum is in a constant right and this is going to be the highlight of uh, today uh, and and i don't know maybe the next lecture as well this is extremely extremely uh, powerful tool that uh, we are introduced to the law of conservation of momentum law of conservation of linear momentum uh i don't know whether you heard the story about uh, about north emi north emi i don't know whether i have told you or not story about emi north So she was a mathematician and a physicist 
in a time uh, when uh, females were not allowed uh, to uh, teach in, in universities. Uh, this was, I think, 1930s, 1920s. And she came up with a theorem, which is called Noether's theorem, uh, which we will not be studying, unfortunately. And I don't think we'll be studying uh, unless you go into uh, unless you go into heavy research. So the theory, the theorem of Nurta is so fascinating. She proved mathematically. Okay, she proved mathematically that if the laws of physics are independent of translation. Let me explain what this means. So we have you in your homes observing the laws of physics and I am in my home observing the laws of physics. So my frame of reference and your frame of reference are translationally shifted. That means Means that my frame of reference is at a distance from your frame of reference. And if both of us, we agree on the laws of physics, okay, we agree on, uh, uh, we agree on uh, the principles of nature. This means that the laws of physics are, the, the technical word is invariant. So the laws of physics are independent of translation of frame of reference. And any Nathar proved that if this is so, then there must naturally exist a quantity, momentum, which must be conserved. Right? It is one of the one of the most important and one of the most fundamental proofs that we have in physics. Then she proved that if the laws of physics are invariant to rotation, that means that if I am observing the laws of physics. Uh, uh, and you are observing the laws of physics, and the laws of physics for us, for both of us are the same. So if the laws of physics are invariant to rotation, they are independent of rotation of the frame, then there must be another quantity which must be conserved naturally. And this another quantity is called angular momentum. Right? We'll see that in the next uh, next. Uh, Next topic, next uh, chapter. What other laws of conservation do you know about? Well, there is the most famous law of conservation of energy. The mass law of conservation of mass really does not work. Law of conservation of energy, right? Law of conservation of energy. What do you think the laws of physics should be? invariant to to naturally give rise to the law of conservation of energy. Right? Can you think? Can you ah, Mass is a form of energy. Yes. Energy is a form of mass. <coughs> nein, nein. The answer is uh, The answer is time. <clears throat> but it turns out that if time is moving in one direction and we have certain sets of rules of physics, it turns out that if time moves in the opposite direction, then nothing changes. The rules of the laws of physics, they don't change. So if the laws of physics are invariant to change of time, then this means that uh, then this means that 
नहीं नहीं टाइम थोड़ी ना अपोजिट डायरेक्शन में जा रहा है क्या बोल रहा है नहीं 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 मैं फिर समझाने की कोशिश करता हूँ हमारे यूनिवर्स में टाइम इफ आई कैन यूज दीज वर्ड इज फ्लोइंग इन वन डायरेक्शन ओके एक्सेप्टिंग फॉर वन लॉ एक्सेप्टिंग फॉर वन लॉ देर इज नथिंग टू स्टॉप time flowing in the opposite direction okay. and if the time is flowing in opposite direction iska matlab ki jo observer apni stopwatch shuru karega to stopwatch ulti chalegi bas agar aisa hua to kisi bhi law of physics ke upar koi farak nahi padne wala hai okay is cheez ka direct कॉन्सिक्वेंस ये है इस चीज का डायरेक्ट कॉन्सिक्वेंस ये है कि देर नेचुरली देर नेचुरली मस्ट एग्जिस्ट ए क्वांटिटी कॉल्ड एनर्जी विच मस्ट बी कंजर्व वेरी वेरी वियर्ड सोचो प्रतीक्षा आंसर क्या होना चाहिए जो तुमने पूछा है प्रतीक्षा इज आस्क वट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द लॉ ऑफ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ चार्ज ना दैट आंसर इज कॉम्प्लिकेटेड अभी तो हम देख अभी तो हम नहीं डिस्कस करेंगे इसको बट बट देर इज समथिंग देर इज समथिंग ओके चल सो मूविंग फ्रॉम मूविंग अवे फ्रॉम नर्थर यू कैन यू कैन गूगल यू कैन गूगल द नेम यू कैन रीड द विकिपीडिया आर्टिकल इट्स फैसिनेटिंग एब्सोल्युटली फैसिनेटिंग एंड सम पीपल कंसीडर आई मीन नर्थर टू बी राइट अप देयर विद आइंस्टाइन not some people most most of the physicists uh they uh, uh they consider uh they consider uh, emin othar to be one of the foremost one of the eminent uh, physicists ever okay chalo aage badhte hain law of conservation of angular uh, law of conservation of linear momentum ke bare mein baat karte hain so how are you going to apply this and what are the rules and conditions and so on and so on before we move on to the law of conservation of linear momentum there is one other thing that i must talk about and that is that if the velocity of center of mass is zero and the acceleration of center of mass is zero then this means that d r c o m by d t will be equal to 0 and this means that r c o m which is the position vector of the center of mass must be constant right this means that m1 x1 plus m2 x2 or let me not write x1 x2 at the moment Let me write m1 r1 plus m2 r2 and so on divided by m1 plus m2 is equal to constant. Does this mean that r1 r2 r3, which are the position vectors of the individual particles one to three, they are also constant? Does this mean? That R one R two, ah, huh, very good, very good discussion. Yes, yes, yes. So this means that R one R two may themselves be changing with time. Okay, but the 
quantity m1 r1 plus m2 r2 is constant right i would like to call this nahi abhi main aur example deta hu i would like to call this uh, i don't know conservation of center of mass okay but this is not a universal name i am just using this okay law of conservation of center of mass okay i am going to change the slide now Please take a screenshot. So, on a river, we have a boat, and we have a person. Let's call him A. Length of the boat is let's say six meters. Mass of the boat is let's say hundred kilograms. Mass of the person is let's say fifty kilograms. Right. So neglect the friction between the boat and water. A walks. to the other end of boat find displacement of boat बिल्कुल सही नहीं भाई सोनक देखो सो व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज आई एम गोइंग टू मेक ए कोऑर्डिनेट एक्सिस राइट हियर ओके प्लीज फॉलो माय एवरी स्टेप फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू हैव ए कोऑर्डिनेट एक्सिस व्हाई वेल बिकॉज़ वी आर गोइंग टू मेजर हाफ पाथ गुड so we are going to measure positions we are going to measure distances and it is no good measuring distances from objects which are going to move you need a fixed point from where to measure distances so the coordinate axis that i have set up is presently coinciding with one end of the boat and the y axis is coinciding with the person a but in the future both or one or uh, the other may move but my coordinate axis will remain where it is 
So now let's say that person A has moved to the other end of the board and this is the future picture. I know that person A is on the other end of the board. This is the future picture. My coordinate axis remains the same. My origin is to here. Right? And now I will say that, look, the distance of this edge of the board is X meters. I don't know whether the board has moved towards the right or towards the left. I'm just assuming that this is the final picture. If the board has moved towards the left and I work everything out, I will get X as negative. If it has moved towards the right, I will get X as positive. If it has moved greater than six meters, then I will be absolutely right in drawing the picture. If it has moved less than six meters, then my picture would be wrong. If it has moved towards the left, my picture would be wrong. But all of it does not matter. What does matter is that the position of the boat and the person have changed, right? Now, I am going to choose as my system so the first thing, and I will keep on repeating this till the end of this course, I will always make you, and you should always make yourself, always be aware of the choice of the system, right? Huh. Okay, so you should all our system consist of man and the boat. So the net forces which are acting on the boat along the x-axis is equal to zero. And the velocity of the center of mass of the boat along the x-axis is also zero before the man decides to move, okay? So velocity of the center of mass along the x-axis is zero before this event occurs. This means that the x coordinate of center of mass of the system must be constant. It cannot change, right? If the x coordinate of center of mass of the system is constant, then with respect to my chosen coordinate system, what is the initial x coordinate of the system? And what is the final x coordinate of the center of mass of the system? Right. So, what is the initial? What is the initial x coordinate of the system? This is easy. This is not difficult at all. Because the man, because the person, can be thought of as one particle located here, and the boat can be thought of as one particle located here, right? Remember we discussed the center of mass location of geometrically symmetrical, uh, of symmetrical objects is located at the geometrical center. So here we must have then a mass of, huh. so I have chosen the system as the green blob that I have drawn as the man and the boat, okay? Now, this system does not have any force along the x-axis on it, and its velocity of center of mass along the x-axis is zero, okay? I, 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 I have said that the man and the boat were stationary in the water, or if I have not said, I meant so if the man and the boat were stationary in the water, we see on x is zero and summation of fx is zero because the friction between the boat and the water is to be neglected. If this is so, then the x coordinate of center of mass of the system will be constant irrespective of whatever happens within the system. Therefore, the initial x coordinate of the center of mass must be the same as the final x coordinate of the center of mass. Initially, I can replace the man with a point particle where I have drawn the green dot, and I can replace the 
boat with a point particle where I have drawn the green dot. Okay. So now I can, in the final picture also, I can replace the boat by the green dot and I can replace the man by the green dot, but we'll come to that in a moment. So what is the initial x coordinate of center of mass? Well, mass of man into the x coordinate of man. Okay, we are not interested in the y coordinate because the man is not going to jump up and down. He is simply walking along with the boat. Plus mass of the boat into the x coordinate of the center of mass of the boat divided by mass of the man plus mass of the boat and the final x coordinate uh, of the center of mass is here so it will be mass of the man into the x coordinate of the man and the x coordinate of the man is this now and this distance is equal to x plus 6 so this will be equal to 50 into x plus 6 plus mass of the boat which is 100 into the x coordinate of the boat which will be equal to x plus 3 whole divided by mass of the man plus mass of the boat right? i hope anybody not understanding please tell me now i will explain it again Tulika. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So, since these two are supposed to be equal, I will equate them and I will get rid of the denominator because they are equal. So, left hand side is 300 and the right hand side is 50x plus 300 plus 100x plus 300. Right? So I get 150x is equal to minus 300, which tells me that x is equal to minus 2 meters. So the boat, as the man walks uh, from point, uh, from this end of the boat to that end of the boat, the boat will actually move towards the left by a distance of 2 meters. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'll go to the next slide now. Next question. So again, we have the hundred kg board. Mass of A this time is 30 kilograms. Mass of B this time is 60 kilograms. Find the displacement of the boat if A and B exchange forces. So the question that we are asked is that if the boat moved towards the left by two meters, how come the x coordinate is the same? And 
the answer is that if the boat moved towards the left by two meters, then it would be something like this. And this person would be here. So it is my contention that uh, it is my contention that the center of mass of the blue picture and the center of mass of the black picture are at exactly the same positions. Okay. And you can calculate very, very easily. So for the blue position, the man is here and the boat is here. So the x coordinate of center of mass is given by 50 into 0 plus 100 into 100 into 3 divided by 50 plus 100. And for the black wall position, this is the center of mass of the boat. This is the center of mass of the person. So we have uh, 50 into 4 plus 100 into uh, 1 divided by 50 plus 100. Right? Look, look. They will numerator is the and denominator is the same. Numerator is the same, right? Hello. So what, what is the question that I asked? What is the question that I asked here? And what is the statement that I've written? The question that I've asked and the statement that I've written. R1, R2 may themselves change, but this quantity remains. This quantity remains. Ha, 18 by 19, I got Eighteen by nineteen or something else? Eighteen by thirteen. Right, so again, same procedure. Let the coordinate axis be here. And let the final picture be here. I'll make the final picture far away so that there is no confusion. So one guy is here, one guy is here. Right. 18 by 19 are I. This guy has a mass of 60 kg. This guy has a mass of 30 kg. Center of mass is here. Right? They've exchanged places. So since F external along the x-axis is zero and BCM along the x-axis is zero, x coordinate of center of mass must be constant. Right? So I hope now you are realizing that I don't really have to worry about the denominator because denominator is going to come out to be equal. So what do I have to do? Initial or final numerator. Initially, we have 30 into 0 plus 100 into 3 plus 60 into 6. Finally, we will have 30 into x plus 6 
plus 100 into x plus 3 plus 60 into x. So, this will be 300 plus 360, which is 660, is equal to 30x plus 180 plus 100x plus 300 plus 60x. Right? So, 100. 60, 90, 190x is equal to uh, 480 minus 660, which is equal to how much? 480 minus 660 is how much? 180. 180. So x is equal to minus. Sir, plus नहीं होगा क्या? Answer plus होगा plus होगा क्या? Yes. Plus. Sir, वो six sixty minus four eighty. Oh, towards the right जाएगा. Oh, I did not think. Sir, जब हम VCOM x uh, sorry VCOM zero बोल रहे हैं तो वो delta v नहीं होना चाहिए क्या क्योंकि बीच में दो के पास velocity है ना? नहीं बीच में भी नहीं है that is that is the whole point because jump a or b or both move karenge so it is guaranteed that m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus m3 v3 will be zero i jump f external zero zero hai to vcm zero hai or vcm change nahi ho sakta hai na yes sir so much abhi to abhi to board pe chadhne mein halat kharab hoti hai matlab i don't know about you guys but mera to Alat kharab ho jata hai. Boat mein jane mein aur boat mein, you know, you, 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 I get at least completely disoriented, disoriented because uh, I'm talking about a small boat, of course. Uh, because, because, main jab aage badne ki koshish karta hoon, to boat piche jati hai, right? So the velocity with which I move forward, uh, that will decide the velocity with which the boat will move backwards. हाँ शाना खिलती रहती है तूने क्या ये लगाया है ये कौन सा किसकी फोटो लगाई चल ओके आगे बढ़ते हैं माय फेवरेट भोजपुरी संगीत का So this is a wedge of mass M and a radius R. And this is a sphere of mass M and a radius small m. Find displacement of wedge as the sphere reaches the bottom. No friction anywhere.
नहीं भाई ना नहीं पर उनसे भी मिस्टेक कर दी सो इफ आई वांट टू टेक द कोऑर्डिनेट एक्सिस लाइक सो एंड इफ आई वांट टू से शानक ये गलत आंसर है ना ये तो डाइमेंशनली इनकरेक्ट हो जाएगा ना फर्स्ट थिंग नहीं गलत तो स्मॉल एम माइनस कैपिटल एम आएगा क्या नहीं स्मॉल एम माइनस कैपिटल एम नहीं आ सकता है नहीं तो फिर जीरो आने लग जाएगा ना एम इज इक्वल टू एम पे गड़बड़ हो जाएगी ना फिर तो इनिशियली हां सो लेट्स से दैट Let's say that I have drawn the original axis somewhere here. Let's say that this distance is x. So the center of mass of this object is here. Center of mass of this object is here. And this is the answer. I have not seen. Ah, not far. Ah, should be seen. So this is the final. x coordinate of center of mass is equal to m into zero plus capital M into R minus R. This is what you have to do. Because ये जो distance होएगी ये R minus R divided by m plus m. Finally, in fact, I'll go with the easier. I'll go with the easier way. So instead of choosing the x-axis here, no, no, I, 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 Let me choose the axis to. Let this distance be x. So x u m is equal to minus m r minus r plus m into zero divided by m plus m because uh, because. This distance would be r minus r, and the final x coordinate is m x plus capital M x divided by m plus. ये तो मैं equal होने चाहिए. So this gives me x is equal to minus m r minus r. this line i should really draw this line i should draw 
dotted because the x because the y axis itself has not moved here i'm just locating that middle line of the wedge which has shifted by distance of we are sabko samajh mein is clear to everyone anybody to whom this is unclear because we are going to derive something from this we are going to come at a conclusion from this sir i have a doubt uh, ah. sir jo uh, humne x x u m constant liya hai wo to before movement of the sphere liya na like f external x external ah so this is this is why i will i will take it very very slowly so you have to make a transition from single particle mechanics to multiple particle mechanics it's not easy what you have to remember is that the moment we choose this as the moment we choose this as the system and we say that f external on this system is equal to zero velocity of center of mass is equal to zero ab kuch bhi ho jaye sphere move kare wedge move kare kuch bhi ho jaye the velocity of center of mass will always remain zero it will never change as the sphere moves to the right the wedge will move to the left such that m sphere into v sphere x component plus m wedge into v wedge x component always remains zero okay and because v sphere always remains zero the x coordinate of center of mass also always remains the same right so although i am taking two different scenarios scenario 1 uh, in which the sphere was on top of the wedge and scenario 2 where the sphere is at the bottom of the wedge although we are only considering two scenarios i can guarantee that beech mein koi bhi scenario raha ho beech mein koi bhi aap point le lo velocity of center of mass of the system and location of the x coordinate of the system will always remain constant it will never change therefore i had written r1 r2 that means the individual locations of the particles may themselves change with time but the quantity m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus m3 r3 does not change with time this is what you have to grasp this is what you have to understand aaya samajh mein kuch kuch Awesome. Next question. Now this is a very standard MCV question. Still, so there is a balloon of mass m. There is a monkey for some reason. CV always gets monkeys in the question, and the balloon and the monkey are separated by a distance of L. So assume C U M of balloon B e at bottom. Monkey 
lines the rope to reach the top. Find displacement of the balloon. Okay, and I'm not going to write this down, but initially the balloon was stationary. Initially, the balloon monkey system was stationary. The bottom of the rope or yeah, bottom of the balloon? Huh? The uh, center of mass of balloon, bottom of balloon, like bottom of rope. No, no, here, the center of mass of balloon is here. Okay, sir. Here. Bottom of the rope, how will it happen? हाँ अब पकड़ा है इसमें हाँ सही आंसर दिया है हाँ अपवर्ड तो नहीं होएगा डाउनवर्ड होएगा हाँ सर डाउनवर्ड सर सॉरी सर So in this case now, नहीं भाई नहीं 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 हाँ बात बिल्कुल सही So in this case I'll simply draw the y-axis now and after some time we will say that the picture is something like this. नहीं प्रतीक्षा एक एक टर्म मिसिंग है देखो आफ्टर सम टाइम पिक्चर इज लाइक दिस सो द वाई कोऑर्डिनेट ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ मास रिमेंस कांस्टेंट म इनटू जीरो plus m into minus l divided by m plus l. And let's say that the balloon has moved down by a distance of x is equal to m into minus x plus m into minus x divided by m plus l. So x is equal to ML upon M plus L. So.
anybody willing to anybody willing to spot the pattern anybody willing to spot the pattern look at this question look at the previous question Okay, uh, ये तो मैंने ज़ूम नहीं किया मैं बता रहा हूँ ना कि वहाँ पे है वो चलक ये देखो बलून का सेंटर ऑफ मास यहाँ आया बलून का सेंटर ऑफ मास यहाँ आया तो अच्छा मंकी भी यहीं आ गया शिवन ये पैटर्न नहीं देर इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पैटर्न विच एग्जिस्ट इफ यू लुक एट दिस क्वेश्चन एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन द पैटर्न इज लाइक इफ द ऑब्जेक्ट दैट इज मूविंग रीच इज द सेंटर ऑफ मास ऑफ अनदर ऑब्जेक्ट देन द डिस्टेंस कवर लाइक डिस्प्लेसमेंट विल बी the mass of the object into the uh, lens and by uh, some of the masses is it that okay pattern ye hai ki agar mere paas do masses m n separated by a distance of l y is same as constant because uh, y is same as constant because the net force is zero summation of force is equal to zero buoyancy force upwards gravitational force downwards is equal to zero net force net external force must be zero not इंडिविजुअल फोर्सेस में ऐसा नहीं सो इफ आई कैलकुलेट द सेंटर ऑफ मास फ्रॉम एम देन द सेंटर ऑफ मास इज एट अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ एम एल बाय एम प्लस एम एंड फ्रॉम दिस गाय द सेंटर ऑफ मास इज एट अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ एम एल बाय एम प्लस एम This in physics is called the inverse ratio. That means that अगर मेरे को small m से distance of center of mass निकालना है, so it will be the other mass multiplied by distance between them divided by sum of mass. अगर मेरे को capital M से center of mass का location निकालना है, then it will be the other mass multiplied by the distance between them divided by the sum of masses. and the thing is that if there is no external force and if this guy decides to move right and if this guy decides to move this will have to move automatically <clears throat> and if they meet then they must meet at the center of mass therefore the distance traveled by this guy will be the other mass divided by initial distance between them divided by its sum of masses and the distance traveled by this guy will be the other mass that is small m multiplied by distance between them divided by sum of masses and look at this so the monkey goes up find the displacement of the balloon The displacement of the balloon will be mass of the monkey 
multiplied by the total distance between them divided by the sum of losses. Look at this. ये दोनों एक कोऑर्डिनेट में आ गए हैं. So the distance moved by the wedge must be the mass of the sphere multiplied by the distance between them divided by the sum of losses. Distance between them is r minus r. आया समझ में ये अभी पैटर्न इज अंडरस्टूड सर अगर हम इस क्वेश्चन में हाँ पिछले वाले कौन सा होगा अभी जो आपने स्लाइड दिखाई थी इसमें जो एक कर्व है सेमी कर्व उसमें से अगर हम दूसरी साइड वाले का थोड़ा सा पार्ट काट दें तो भी सेम रहेगा आंसर आप काट दे मतलब क्या हुआ जो दो ऊपर दिख रहे हैं हमें उनमें से एक काटने के लिए और क्या दिख रहा है तेरे को मतलब तू बोल रहा है कि इंटरमीडिएट कोई भी पार्ट कोई भी वो ले लो सर ये जो सेमी सर्कल दिख रहा है उसका सेमी सर्कल में से पार्ट पूरा काट देंगे हाँ, तो लेकिन ऐसा नहीं हो सकता वो वेज के ऊपर से चले जाएगा फिर कूद के अलग ही जगह वेज के ऊपर से मत तू ये बोल रहा है कि ये वाला पार्ट काट देना हाँ हाँ ऊपर से चला जाएगा लेकिन जब तक ये इस पोजीशन पे आ रहा है नहीं ये आंसर सेम नहीं आएगा ना क्योंकि फिर वेज का सेंटर ऑफ मास ज़्यादा हो जाएगा वेज का सेंटर ऑफ मास कहीं और हो जाएगा ना ये अर्थ है ये इसका मास कैपिटल एम है यहाँ पे एक पार्टिकल है एच हाइट पे एच इज वेरी वेरी स्मॉल एज कम्पेयर टू रेडियस ऑफ दर्थ लेकिन इसका मास है एम बाई टू फाइंड वेलोसिटी ऑफ पार्टिकल when it hits the surface of the earth
बताओ भाई कोई तो बताओ नहीं शाला नहीं नहीं टाइप करने में मुश्किल आ रहा है नहीं 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 द होल पॉइंट इज दैट द ऑब्जेक्ट इज नॉट गोइंग टू ट्रैवल इन द डिस्टेंस h दैट इज द होल पॉइंट अभी तो वही मैंने पैटर्न समझाया ना सो डिस्टेंस ट्रैवल्ड नहीं नहीं डिस्टेंस ट्रैवल्ड बाय m बाय 2 विल बी इक्वल टू द अदर मास मल्टीप्लाइड बाय टोटल डिस्टेंस बिटवीन देम divided by the sum of masses so this will before it hits the surface of the earth this will be the distance traveled by the will be equal to 2h by 3 so velocity simply equal to root of 2g 2h by 3 root of 4g आया समझ में जैसे जैसे सर जब हमने प्रोजेक्टाइल मोशन में ये सब किया था ऊपर से ड्रॉप किया था तब ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं हुआ क्योंकि तो प्रोजेक्टाइल का मास अर्थ के मास के आधा नहीं होता है ना प्रोजेक्टाइल का मास अर्थ के मास का आधा नहीं होता है ना मैंने एग्जांपल दिया ना कि लोग कूद रहे हैं तो लोग कूदे तो अर्थ नीचे गया ऐसा होना चाहिए बट व्हेन यू कैलकुलेट द मास ऑफ ऑल द पीपल ऑन दिस अर्थ एंड देन यू कैलकुलेट द मास ऑफ द अर्थ मास ऑफ द अर्थ विल बी वे मोर देन द मास ऑफ द पीपल एंड देयरफॉर व्हेन द पीपल जंप अप द डिस्टेंस ट्रैवल्ड बाय द अर्थ विल बी नेग्लेक्टेडली स्मॉल बट हियर you have a particle whose mass is half the mass of the earth therefore when it moves down earth is going to move up and the But total distance ha isme hum in dono ke center of mass ke beech ka distance nahi lenge ki nahi nahi kyunki kyunki yahan pe yahan pe it is the distance traveled the total distance traveled by the two objects total distance traveled by the two objects total distance traveled by the two objects is h so iska matlab m by 2 itna distance travel karega aur m iska ulta that means m by 2 into h divided by m plus m by 2 distance travel karega h by 3 distance jab humne प्रोजेक्टाइल में देखा था तब हमने मास तो कंसीडर ही नहीं किया था तो मास कुछ भी हो आंसर हो हां तो मैं क्रिकेट बॉल को ड्रॉप करूंगा या फुटबॉल को ड्रॉप करूंगा तो अर्थ ऊपर आएगा लेकिन जो है कुछ पिकोमीटर से ऊपर आएगा तो वो मेजर करने का मतलब नहीं है ना आया ना समझ में जो मैं बोल रहा हूं 
सर अगर सेंटर ऑफ मास लेके करना है तो फिर प्लस आर माइनस आर बाद में एडजस्ट कर सकते हैं ना हाँ बिल्कुल कर सकते हैं कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा ओके इफ आई हैव ए पॉइंट पार्टिकल एंड द अर्थ and the mass of the point particle is half the mass of the earth then taking this as a system we will assume that the external force on the system is zero at least in this direction it is zero velocity of center of mass is zero therefore the center of mass cannot change if the center of mass cannot change then as the point particle of mass m by 2 comes down the earth of mass m goes up now if it was normal mechanics that means the mass of this particle was negligible as compared to the earth then this mass would fall a complete distance h before it strikes the surface of the earth but since now the mass of the point particle is half that of mass of the earth this means that as the mass moves down the earth moves up a considerable distance and if the particle strikes the earth when the particle strikes the earth the distance moved by the particle will not be equal to h because the earth would have moved up because ultimately why is the mass moving down the mass is moving down because of gravitational force on it due to earth and we know that there is an equal and opposite reaction so this means that there is an equal and opposite gravitational force on the earth as well and therefore the earth will go up so when the particle strikes the surface of the earth then by that time the earth has also moved up and from our calculation of center of mass we can very easily calculate that this distance will be 2h by 3 and this distance will be h by 3 so the effective distance that the mass will fall in earth's gravity will be equal to 2h by 3 therefore its velocity will be equal to root 2g distance fallen root 2g into 2h by 3 aaya bhi samajh mein okay but sir agar mass aur kam hota aur agar hum same pattern use karte to automatically distance h aa jata ha नेग्लिजिबल आ जाएगा ना क्योंकि आप डिनोमिनेटर में मास ऑफ द अर्थ प्लस मास ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट आ रहा है ना तो मास ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट अगर नेग्लिजिबल है तो नीचे केवल मास ऑफ द अर्थ आ जाएगा और ऊपर भी मास ऑफ द अर्थ आ जाएगा दोनों कैंसिल हो जाएंगे एच विल बी लेफ्ट विद एच ओके ओके सर ओके चलो सो आई विल स्टॉप हियर and if you want to take screenshots number 1 sir aap wo average batane wale the continuous masses ka kaise lete hain ha sir main bata rahi hu kabhi average kya batane wala tha main continuous masses ka average kaise lete hain continuous masses ka average nahi hoga continuous quantity ka average hoga sir quantity se ha that is actually very easy किसी भी चीज का अगर आप एवरेज लेना चाहते हो सपोजिंग दैट आई वांट टू फाइंड द एवरेज वेलोसिटी ओवर डिस्टेंस जीरो टू एल वी डी एक्स डिवाइडेड बाय जीरो टू एल दिस इज द एवरेज ओवर द 
distance x average v or average of anything does not have to be v is equal to integral of this object dn divided by integral of dn. 0 to n naught is 0 to right as a average let the hand same formula, sum divided by sum, or or कुछ नहीं, but उस sum को अब हमने integration में convert कर, it is the same x dm हमने तो किया ही हुआ, x dm divided by integral of dm, that's it, that's the average. You are finding the weighted average of mass. इसके बाद है क्लास नहीं है यस सर है सर अच्छा थैंक यू अच्छा ठीक तो इसमें चलो गाइस आई विल सी यू टुमारो आई थिंक टुमारो कल मिलते हैं Thank you, sir.